Welcome to Delta Cas Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a reverse sugar tongue with a double sugar tongue that's optional. So let's talk about the reverse sugar tongue. This is an optional way to apply a sugar tongue, letting gravity help you as you apply it. So for this particular splint, the injury is a distal radius fracture or very bad injury to the wrist. And our goal with this particular splint is to stop supination and pronation of the extremity and stop flexion and extension. One of the things that it also limits is extension of the elbow. So we'll not allow for full extension of the elbow. And if you need to stop extension of the elbow period, you need to add the double sugar tongue. So we'll talk about that later. So the injury is there, but our goal is to stop our splint at the distal palmar crease. And when we do our measurement, we'll measure from either the ring finger all the way around the elbow, all the way back up to the ring finger. Again, this is not the regular sugar tongue. And this allows us to move the splint as we go down so we can apply it a little bit better on the patient. So the position of the patient is going to be at 90 degrees at the elbow and the wrist will be in a neutral position or unless stated by the provider who may or may not want flexion or extension on this particular splint. So let's go ahead and apply some padding, but first let's measure. We'll measure it, of course, on the uninjured extremity to lessen any type of injury or uncomfortableness to the patient. So we'll measure, make sure the patient's at 90, go around the elbow, and this is our measurement for our splint. So I'll put that there. Now let's go ahead and pad the patient. And if you need some assistance while you do this, the person who's applying the splint should be in front of the extremity. And if you have an assistant help you, they need to be over here holding the extremity, what we call a JJ hold, and hold them just like that. If you need counter pressure, you will put your hand on mid humerus and distract that wrist so that we can keep that bone in better alignment. So we just wrapped around the wrist, go up to the hand, and then we'll work our way proximal, and we'll stop our padding like mid upper arm. We wanna have a minimum of two layers, max of four, but concentrate on making sure that you don't over pad the wrist area where the fracture or the injury is, especially for radiographic purposes. So as I go down the cylinder-like portion of the extremity, I want to apply this in a 50-50 uh, measure where I just make sure that every revolution, I cover 50% of what I just put on. Now I'm getting closer to the elbow, and I want to make sure that the patient's at 90 degrees, and I'll do what we call a figure eight type of application. So I'll get close to the base of the elbow, base of the antecubital space area also, and then I'll go around the upper portion of the upper arm, and then I'll hit the elbow as I come back up. Now what we want to look for now, we want to look for any shadows or any areas and then reposition the patient. If you see any areas where there needs extra padding, go ahead and apply some. Okay, so now let's go ahead and cut our orthoglass. And I'm gonna have the patient just put her arm down we will keep this patient in the right position while we prepare our orthoglass. So I'll be using a three inch for this particular size of the patient. Now this is imperative that when we apply the splint that both of those sides do not touch 
okay? Because that, in a sentence, is a cast, if you will. It's totally circumferential. We want leaving an open space for inflammation purposes. So this is where it was cut last. I'll go ahead and pull this out. Give myself a little extra. And let's go ahead and close the box up. Let's go ahead and close this package, the seal. Fold that over and make a nice little crease. Get you the closure, make sure it's the upside down T like position and put it in that little crease that you made. Close that off and now your orthoglass is sealed for the next use. So this is how we're going to prepare this. We'll get this in half, okay? Different ways to prepare this, but this is just one way. And then we'll find the middle of the substrate, and then we just go ahead and cut it. Now next, we'll cut our ends to make sure that it's not hanging out, no sharp edges or anything that can cause discomfort to the patient. And then we'll close it back up. Now there's two ways to take care of this, but this is one particular way what we all do now is just stretch it out because the padding is stretchable. And then what we do, we've opened up this space here, maybe an inch or two. So now we can go ahead and cut this directly in the middle and it's already taken care of our edge that doesn't need to be hanging out. And you can cut this on either end. Now when you cut this, you'll leave just a little bit of the padding intact so that this will be draped in the web space. So let's go ahead and activate our splint material. And just roll it on itself. Just disperse the water throughout the whole splint. because we want this to set up everywhere so that that mobilization or the position we put the patient in is in the right position and it stays that way without any movement. Unroll that. Check one more time for your edges. Now let's go ahead and dry out the extra wetness and dampness from wetting it. Now what we're gonna do next is get the patient in position and have the patient at 90 degrees and we're gonna drape this between their web space and then we'll start wrapping it. Smooth it out just a tad. Make sure the patient's at 90 degrees. and this just drape this. And our goal now is to center the splint on both sides, the dorsal and volar aspect. So let's start by immobilizing the wrist area. Hold that in place, go one time around there. Do not pull too hard. If you can see through your elastic bands, you're probably pulling a little bit too hard. So now, since we have it anchored, now let's position our splints where it's centered on the dorsal aspect and then also centered on the volar aspect. 
Some people cut this at an angle. You can do that, or you can just roll it down. So now let's go through this web space. And the beauty of this, even if your splint migrates a tad, you can always move it back compared to the regular sugar tongue that's all in a continuous piece. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to contour this underneath the elbow, hold it in place just a tad, grab the other piece, pull this taut, and now, you know, that kind of keeps everything in place. This is all padding, so I'm not worried about that. So now, let's go ahead and finish this splint coverage. Doing that figure eight again. Pull that taut so it can contour underneath that elbow really well. We don't have any, what you call, poke outs or dog ears, if you will. So now we have it completed, totally wrapped. But let's do one more thing. Let's take care of this edge here to make sure that it's off of the metacarpal heads. And then we can reposition this area that wasn't covered as well. Your goal should be to get this patient wrapped up as fast as possible, make it all extra beautiful later. So what I have here is the reverse sugar tongue, and we got the patient in 90 degrees, but now since we made our padding uh, high enough, that's when you will add the double sugar tongue if you wanna stop extension of the elbow. All right, when I put my padding on originally, I put the padding a little bit further just in case I needed to add on the double sugar tongue. Now that's important that you have your padding a little bit further than your elastic bandage, why? Because now you don't have to undo this to add more padding. So let's go ahead and add some more padding for the double sugar tongue. And our measurement, let's do that, is going to be from the shoulder or the tuberosity area over here and go all the way down into the axilla area here. So let's measure for that. This is our template for our splint. Put that down and let's add some more padding now to her. All right, so the patient's gonna maintain that 90 degree angle at the elbow. Now let's go ahead and cut our orthoglass splint material. And I'll use this three inch. And it is fine to use a wider splint if the patient has a larger upper arm. So it was cut here, so that's where I'll add my template measurement. Give myself just a little bit extra, just in case, especially if you're going to cut down the substrate that's hanging out instead of pulling the padding. And that is optional. So let's stuff this down and take care of sealing this up. Fold that down. Your goal is to have a nice little length here as you seal it up. Close that off. Now we're ready to go. So here's my splint. I take care of my edges now. 
So let's cut this down. And let's take care of the other end. All right, so let's go ahead and activate this with some water. And just roll it on itself like we did earlier. Disperse the water throughout the whole splint. Get all the excess water out of the padding itself. And it's optional, you can actually take the whole substrate out of this and activate that only and then put it back in there and that way this padding will not be dampened. But this is a common way to go ahead and activate the splint material. All right, so now let's get these prepared. Let's take this off, the last advantages. All right. All right, making sure I have good coverage of the padding here. Go ahead and just start wrapping this. Go. All right. Make sure I have everything covered. Nothing sticking out of the edges of the splint material. All right. So when we get done with this particular splint, the patient would needs to be at a 90 degree angle and that's at the elbow. We already finished this splint, so we don't have to worry about this movement at all. But now we're ready to go and this is gonna stop the patient from doing full extension of the elbow for injuries that require it. Again, this was the reverse sugar tongue using our optional double sugar tongue. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.